In this video, we're going to investigate arcs, central angles, and inscribed angles. This first theorem, which we're going to call Theorem 9, is the central angle property. And it's the idea that the central angle measure is equal to the measure of the arc that it contains. So, if we get a visual look at it, we would define angle CAB as a central angle, because it's an angle that has its vertex at the center of the circle. And then the sides, or the rays, or the segments that make up the sides of the angle are both radii of the circle. You can see AB is a radius, and AC is a radius. So this fits our description of central angle. And so what we're introducing here is we're introducing the idea of the measure of an arc. We've always known that angles can have a measure in terms of degrees, but now we have an actual arc has a measure in terms of degrees. So what we would say here is we would say if this central angle is 42 degrees, that this corresponding arc would have a measure of 42 degrees, okay? In other words, that angle CAB, the measure of angle CAB is equal to the measure of arc CB. And so let's do a check for understanding on that. And so as we look here, we're, we're gonna try to figure out the value of each of these variables. You see these variables kind of peppered around this problem. So we might have to bounce around. I don't know if we'll be able to do these in order. But I start and I see that this central angle right here is 70 degrees, and it's given one little congruency mark there, and then we have a similar mark here for our variable B. So therefore, B is going to have the same measure as 70 degrees. And then, where we can go from that, and I'm just kind of bouncing all over the place here, um, but we know that if this angle is 70 degrees, that's a central angle, and E here would be the corresponding arc. And we just learned with our new property that this arc is going to have the same measure as the central angle. So E is going to be 70 degrees as well. Next, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Out here we have an arc of 55 degrees. And we know that the measure of this arc will be the same as the measure of this central angle. Therefore, if that's 55, then this central angle will also be 55 degrees. And let's see, that is D, so D would be 55. Now we still have to figure out C, and we still have to figure out F. Note, we don't have either one of those, so I can't use C to find F, and I can't use F to find C. But let's use what else we know. We know what all the central angles in a circle should add up to. We know that all of these central angles together should add up to 360. So what I can do is I can fill in this angle's measure because we know the corresponding arc is 60 degrees. So if I write down that this central angle would be 60 degrees, I can do the math and figure out if I do 55 plus 70 plus 60 plus another 70 and subtract from 360, I did that and I got that our last angle, this missing angle here, would be 105 degrees. And that also means that the corresponding arc would have a measure of 105 degrees. So just a little property real quick. We know that all of our central angles are gonna add up to 360. And since each central angle is equal to the measure of its corresponding arc, we know that all the arcs together would add up to 360 as well. Let's move on, let's learn about inscribed angles. So our, our property that we're gonna learn, what we're gonna call theorem 10, is that the inscribed angle measure is equal to one half the measure of the arc that it contains. And so what that means here is, here we have an inscribed angle. Note, this is not a central angle because its vertex isn't at the center of the circle, the vertex is on the edge of the circle. And the sides of the angle, or the rays of the angle, are not radii, but they are chords. Okay, so we see we have, we have our angle, our inscribed angle CAB here with a measure of 21. Now, our property here is going to be a little different than what we learned about central angles. Here the property is going to be that the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Oops. And so, uh, I can write that down right here. Let's see, it would be that the um, measure of angle CAB in this case is equal to one half the measure of arc CB. So now we know if it's an inscribed angle, it's half the measure of that arc. And so let's do a check for understanding here. Um, if you think you know how to do this problem, I would say go ahead and pause it and see what you can figure out on your own. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. 
And the first thing that I see, the first thing that jumps out at me is that we have this arc measure of 140 degrees, okay? If we have that that arc has a measure of 140 degrees, we need to recognize that this angle right here, and I'm, I'm kind of bolding the sides of that with red, that's an inscribed angle right here. This angle that has a measure of D degrees is inscribed to this arc. And so what we know is that this angle will have half the measure of its intercepted arc. In other words, that, that D will have a value of 70. Okay? Our next route we could go is here. And this one's kind of hard to see, but if hopefully we recognize that this chord right here is specifically a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. If it goes through the center of the circle, that means it cuts the circle in half. So this arc right here, although it doesn't flat out tell us, we should be able to recognize that that arc is actually 180 degrees because it's half the circle. It's half the circle because this is a diameter. And so now, I'm gonna, I might get too many lines going here, but if I kind of bold the sides of this angle in green, you can see that this angle that has a measure of E degrees is inscribed into this arc right here. So if this is 180 degrees, we know that this angle, this inscribed angle, would be half of 180. In other words, I don't have a lot of room to write it, it's going to be 90 degrees. So E is 90, okay? Oh, and I never wrote down that G is 180. I can go and do that real quick. Now, the last thing we got to figure out is C. And so I can go about this a couple of ways. Um, for one, I know that all of these arcs are going to add up to 360, so I could figure out what F is, and then divide by 2 to find angle C. Or I could go the other direction. I know that this triangle, the sum of its angles, are going to be 180. And so if I figure out what this angle is, I can double it, and it will give me the measure of this arc. So I'm going to go that route. I know that 90 plus 70 is 160. And so if this entire triangle should add up to 180, that means this C must be... 20 degrees. If that C is 20 degrees, then that means that F must be 40 degrees. So there we go. We used our properties and what we know about inscribed angles to uh, do that problem. Let's learn another property. This is the opposite angle property. And opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. Okay, and so here I've got a diagram, and this kind of says everything that we need it to say, but note I have a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. It's inscribed in this circle. It's contained in this circle with all the vertices of this quadrilateral laying on the circle. And basically what we know is these opposite angles here are going to be supplementary. And so if I come here, a little check for understanding, I think this is pretty straightforward. We've got a similar problem here. We see that this angle is opposite this angle in the inscribed quadrilateral. So we know that 84 plus A is going to be equal to 180. If I were to subtract 84 from each side and solve this equation for A, we would get that A equals 96 degrees. So pretty, pretty simple example of, of that property. Now, we've got a few problems that are... Um, not over any one of these theorems that we just learned, but just kind of some general review and practice. So I'm going to start with this problem. And so when we look at this problem, what we see is we have a 32 degree inscribed angle. And then we have another inscribed angle over here that we're trying to figure out its measure. And so um, but what we know is, is, is I might not know yet how to jump directly from here to here, but let's think about what we do know. I know that if that angle right there is 32 degrees, then what we know is that this angle into which, or excuse me, this arc to which that angle is inscribed is going to be 32 times 2, or 64 degrees. And now you see that, okay, this other angle, this angle shown in red, is actually inscribed to the same angle. Okay, it's inscribed to the same angle. Therefore, if I knew the arc, excuse me, inscribed to the same arc, I keep misspeaking there, I apologize. But this angle is inscribed to the same arc, so I should be able to take this arc and divide by 2 to find this angle. So B is also equal to 32 degrees. And so what we have is kind of another idea that's almost a corollary of, of what we learned earlier, that if I have two angles that are inscribed to the same arc, those two angles are going to be congruent. 
And so that might not seem very intuitive. So I found a little applet that might help us see it a little bit. I found this applet on GeoGebra. This was created by HillMath, and there's the URL if you would like to access it yourself. But it just shows that let's say I've got this, um, let's say I've got this inscribed angle, and it's and it's inscribed to this particular arc, and it, it's just showing that no matter where I put that inscribed angle, it's going to have the same measure. It's always going to have a measure of 54 degrees, and that's going to be kind of a big property for us. I found there's some other applets that show the same thing. Here's one created by Martin McMulkin. And here you can see that no matter where I'm putting these angles, since they're all inscribed into the same arc, they all have the same measure. If I reduce the arc, you can see that no matter where I put these angles, they're always going to share that measure. So angles inscribed to the same arc are congruent. Let's do our next practice problem. So right here we're looking at this and we have a 51 degree angle, and it looks like we're trying to find the measure of the central angle, which is, in, which is um, in, or, uh, the central angle kind of intercepts the same arc. And so this would just be a simple little two-step problem, nothing too complicated, but if this angle's 51 degrees, we know that the arc that it intercepts would be 51 times two, or in other words, 102 degrees. And then we learned that the central angle has the same measure as the arc that it intercepts. So here, that would be 102 degrees as well. Let's do this problem. This problem adds just a tiny little amount of rigor, nothing too bad. Uh, but what we see is, is we have this uh, 33 degree angle and we're trying to find the measure of angle C. And so what I would suggest first is, is think about what information we're given. And we're, we're given these little markings, and if we have forgotten what those mean, those markings actually mean that the lines are parallel, okay? If I have little marks, it means that those lines are parallel. And one thing that we need to remember about parallel lines is that when I have two parallel lines and what we call a transversal, this line that intersects it's a transversal, these alternate interior angles are gonna be congruent. In other words, in this situation, if, if this line right here is our transversal to the parallel lines, we know that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. So this angle is also going to be 33 degrees. And now what we are hopefully seeing is that this 33 degree angle is inscribed to that arc that's kind of shaded in green, but we have this other angle, the angle that we're actually trying to find is inscribed to the same arc. So if we have two angles that are inscribed to the same arc, we hopefully recognize that those angles must be congruent. Therefore, C is 33 degrees as well. Let's do one last practice problem and then we're done. On this problem, uh, it looks like we're given the measure. This angle's measure is 55 degrees and we're trying to find angle E. So once again, pause the video, give this one a try on your own and whenever you're ready, hit play and see if you got it right. But what I recognize right off the bat is that this angle right here is an inscribed angle to, to this arc that is right here. Therefore, if I take this angle measure and double it, it's gonna give me that this arc's measure is 110 degrees. The next thing that I'm recognizing as I look at this problem is that this segment right here is no normal chord, but since that's the center, this is a diameter of the circle. I Meaning if this is the diameter of the circle, it's cutting our arc in half. Or yeah, cutting, cutting our circle in half. So this arc right here, the full thing, uh, is 180 degrees. We know that this part right here, oops, I'll try to be color coded. This part right here is 110 degrees, but we know that that blue arc plus what I'm kind of shading as a red arc is gonna be 180. So if I take do 180 and I take away 110, that means that's going to be a 70 degree arc right there because the 110 plus the 70 would be 180. And we did all that work, and, but now we're in a position where we can solve the problem. We see that I have this inscribed angle right here that's inscribed to that arc. So if that arc is 70, hopefully by this point we recognize that this inscribed angle will have half the measure of that arc. So this angle, this inscribed angle is going to be 35 degrees.